Hi, yes, hello, and welcome back to another Millennial Movie member request. If you're new here, hi, my name is Ashley, and if you're a returner, welcome back. I'm a millennial who likes to go back and watch your older classic movies for the very first time. That's on Mondays. On Fridays, my top tier patrons, my Millennial Movie members, can pick any movie of any genre of any year, and I gotta watch it. Now today, if you haven't seen the title or read the thumbnail, I'm watching the 1941 Citizen Kane. I feel like this is one of those movies that is referenced in so many sitcoms and so many other movies. Um, I know Family Guy has talked about, you know, all my references go back to Family Guy cause classic. I don't know anything about it and I haven't done this in a while so I'm gonna look up a movie poster. So this is what I am looking at. Everybody's talking about it. It's terrific. Orson Welles, Citizen Kane. So Orson Welles, I know from you know, radio and his, his writing radio dramas. I know he was a big player in television as well and apparently films too. So other than it's terrific, it doesn't really say much. Uh, you know, you got Joseph Cotton, Dorothy Cummingore. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know anything about it in 1941. So it's an older one. I don't know. It doesn't give anything away. I don't know. Well, movie poster didn't help me today. No more diddle dallying. Let's get right on into today's Millennial Movie Member Request from 1000th Ghost in the comments. Chris in real life. It is the 1941 Citizen Kane. The ominous castle in the back. Oh, heavens. Look at those little monkeys. Cute. Okay. Oh, now we're inside the room. Okay, that was a cool transition. That was a really cool transition. I shit on it at first. That was good, though. Rosebud? Rosebud? News on the mark. Scared me. I'm so jumpy. The biggest private zoo since Noah. <laughs> the biggest private zoo since Noah. In Xanadu last week was held the 1941's biggest, strangest funeral. Oh, sign me up. Charles Foster Kane. Dies after a lifetime of service. Okay, so this was a big deal. It was like a global news release that he died to 44 million u.s news buyers more newsworthy than the names in his own headlines was kane himself greatest newspaper tycoon of this or any other generation there we go it was her wish that i should take charge of this boy this charles foster kane her son don't say this boy it's literally her son often support then denounce Oh my god. Oh my god. He'd be men with Hitler and stuff? Conceived for Susan Alexander Kane. Have finished before she divorced him. The still unfinished Xanadu. She had him build that and then divorce him and it wasn't even done? Defeat that set back for 20 years the cause of reform in the U.S. Man, when you're that close to being president, why would you be fooling around? I don't believe everything you hear on the radio. Uh, read the Inquirer. <laughs> Death came to Charles Foster Kane. I feel like I just took in a lot of information about this man. That's a lot to try to get into a newsreel. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's exactly how I was supposed to feel because it's a newsreel. Got it. What were Kane's last words? Do you remember, boys? Uh, yes. If he was alone, do we know? After Kane died, he said just one word. Rosebud. Mm. Oh, so we got to figure out what Rosebud means. She's still living. Susan Alexander Kane. She's running a nightclub in Atlantic City. Yeah. Um, let's go find her. I bet she'll know. Get her another highball. She just won't talk to nobody, Mr. Thompson. Okay. Another double? Oh, she's not only drinking highballs, she's drinking doubles. She's gonna have a hell of a headache tomorrow. Just the other day, when the papers were full of it, I asked her. She never heard of Rosebud. Hmm. Is it a person? Is it a password to something? Like this big of a deal person, this wealthy of a person, maybe it's a password for something? Come on, boys! 
<gasps> so they were childhood friends. That property is just as much my property as anybody's. Now that it's valuable. <laughs> now that it's valuable. Keywords there. Anybody think I hadn't been a good the husband The sum of $50,000 a year is to be paid to you and Mr. Kane as long as you both live. That's a huge amount of money. Well, let's hope it's all for the best. It is. Look, see, he heard $50,000 a year and he was like, all right, do it. He reaches his 25th birthday, at which time he is to come into complete possession. Ciao! She for real signed her son away? I've had it packed for a week now. Hmm. Is Rosebud about his mom? You going, Mom? Well, no, your mother won't be going right away, Charles. This is so scary for a little kid. You'll probably be the richest man in America someday, and you, you ought to get an lonely, education. Charles. This makes me sad for him. Stop it, Charlie! What's that to display with? Mom. Ah, so that is the old man that was in the boardroom earlier. What that kid needs is a good thrasher. That's what you think, is it, Jim? Yes. That's why he's going to be brought up where you can't get at him. Oh, guess you heard that, Jim. Juan, sorry, but I'm not interested in gold mines, oil wells, shipping, or real estate. Not Fun interested. Not the reply I expected. Please don't sell it. I'm coming back to America to take charge. I think it would be fun to run a newspaper. Said no one ever. <laughs> Fun to run a newspaper. Uh, Ooh, these old movies just randomly break the fourth wall sometimes. It weirds me out. So, Kane out here exposing all the big wigs for what they're really doing. I don't know how to run a newspaper, Mr. Thatcher. I just try everything I can think of. Let me tell you something. Between that voice and that face, he is one cute, handsome little man. It's in quite a campaign against the public transit company. Mr. Thatcher, do you know anything we could use against them? Sure ain't gonna help you. It's also my pleasure to see to it that decent, hardworking people in this community aren't robbed blind by a pack of money mad pirates. Hmm. He sees his privilege and his ownership in the problem, but then also works to expose the problem. You know, Mr. Thatcher, at the rate of a million dollars a year, I'll have to close this place in 60 years. Wow, what is it like to be that wealthy? I will lose a million dollars a year for 60 years. Screw it. Too old to call me Mr. Thatcher, Charles. You're too old to be called anything else. <laughs> you're not Rosebud, are you? What? Rosebud. And your name is Jennings, isn't it? Yes, you're right. Goodbye, Frank. everybody. <laughs> Didn't That's even let him ball. answer. Why is his, the back of his chair so obnoxiously large? The journal of his. Thatcher. That man was the biggest darn fool I ever met. He made an awful lot of money. Turns out a lot of people don't like Thatcher. Take a good look at it, Jedediah. Jedediah! Get, what in the world kind of name is that? Nobody that has access to electricity, I tell you that. The editor-in-chief. Thank you, Mr. Carter, but uh, this is Mr. Leland. Oh, the, how do uh... you do, Mr. Leland? No, no. <laughs> Crazy old man. Oh my god, you okay, buddy? What? <laughs> what? Carter. How do you do, Mr. Carter? Mr. Carter? Yeah, yes. Mr. Carter. Uh, how do you do? Mr. Carter. Yes, how do you do? <laughs> it's going to have to be changed around here. The news goes on for 24 hours a day. And thus was born the 24-hour news cycle. Are you Enough. still eating? I'm still hungry. Now look. <laughs> Me? Chronicle about a Mrs. Harry Silverstone in Brooklyn who's missing. Now, she's probably murdered. He has a picture of her in the Chronicle. Why isn't there something about it in the Inquirer? Because they're running a newspaper. Sure. You don't think a missing woman who is probably murdered is not news? Murdered? No, or proof, even that she's dead. Because she's missing and the neighbors are getting suspicious. It's not no, our function to report the gossip of housewives. Lord has come over, done, disintegrated, and everything. Why is his pants all the way up to his nip naps? Now they're going to get the truth in the Inquirer quickly and simply and entertainingly and no special interests are going to be allowed to interfere with Hmm, we'll see how long that works for you. Hey look, he got his three columns on the front page though, good for him! You know how long it took the Chronicle to get that staff together? So now we gotta steal the staff. I got my candy, all of it. <laughs> Welcome gentlemen to the Inquirer! That's exactly what he did, he hired him there! I have never been able to figure out how people whistle like that. 
I love how the older movies always have like a group of ladies and they always do a dance. There is a man! A certain man! A certain man! And for the boy, you may be sure that he'll do all he can. Who loves to smoke? Who loves to smoke? And George and George. Unitards with the little pearls and stars. It's so much fun. Oh! Bold move. Okay, fun. Little windmill moment. Look, he wants to buy the world's biggest diamond. Why? Bernstein, am I a stuffed shirt? Am I a horse face hypocrite? Am I a New England school marm? I don't know what any of those words mean. Diamond, I didn't know Charlie was collecting diamonds. He ain't. He's collecting somebody that's collecting diamonds. He's gonna propose? I've got a little uh, social announcement. I wish you wouldn't treat it any differently than you would any other. Oh, uh, a proposal? A proposal? I'm sorry. I... Why is he being weird? Say, he was in an awful hurry. That's what I thought. Hey, hey, everybody. Looky out here. Let's go. Looky. Mr. and Mrs. Thomas Monroe Norton announced the engagement of their daughter Emily. Engagement! It didn't end very well, did it? It ended. <laughs> it ended. I wish I knew where Mr. Leland was. A lot of the time now they don't tell me these things. Remember a time in the world where we, you know, didn't know where people were? We weren't constantly connected? Old age. It's the only disease, Mr. Thompson that you don't look forward to being cured of. Oh, that's a good quote. Well, after the first couple of months, she and Charlie didn't see much of each other except at breakfast. It was a marriage just like any other marriage. I see Blake more than at just breakfast, so I don't really know what marriage you're talking about. Beautiful. Oh, I can't. Yes, you are. You're very, very beautiful. Been six parties in one night. Six parties in one night? Meanwhile, I can't go to one dinner and not be just worn the worn out. <gasps> She's so pretty. I love that dress. Do you know how long you kept me waiting last night while you went to the newspaper for ten minutes? <laughs> what thing about men? If they're like, I'm gonna pop in here real quick, ten minutes tops, it's not gonna be ten minutes tops. This whole oil scandal. He happens to be the present, Charles, not you. That's a mistake that will be corrected one of these days. The confidence. People will think. What I tell them to think. Oh no. Wow, she said less and less, and now they say nothing at all. That's why he did everything. That's why he went into politics. It seems we weren't enough. He wanted all the voters to love him too. He does it. He didn't do everything for love. He did it all for attention. Back when you know that that pain medicine right there probably was laced with some for real cocaine. You know she's feeling good after that. Said if you wanted some hot water, I could get you some. She's just being nice. You're the one covered in mud, you douchebag. See that? What are you doing? I'm wiggling both my ears at the same time. How do people wiggle their ears? I can't figure it out. I don't know what muscle it is, but I ain't got it. Is it a giraffe? No, it's, it's a duck. <laughs> it's supposed to be a rooster. No. Oh, I was wrong. You really don't know who I am? Well, you told me your name, Mr. Kane, but I'm awful ignorant, but I guess you caught on to that. <laughs> she roasted herself. She's really pretty, too. But how old? Pretty old. How old? 22 in August. Pretty old? Well, I... Well, don't tell me your toothache is still bothering you. Oh, no, that's all gone. Mm. Mm. That's the power of a company of a handsome man. The downright villainy of boss Jim W. Gettys' political machine. Political? Political? Because until a few weeks ago, I had no hope of being elected. Self-awareness is a wonderful quality to possess. My first official act as governor of the state will be to appoint a special district attorney to arrange for the indictment, prosecution, and conviction of boss Jim W. Gettys. Wow, that's a big claim. Also, if I was going to run for office or run for anything and I had banners everywhere, I would not pick a banner that had my double chin on full ass display. Did y'all notice that? It's a, 
With his little hat on? Mm-mm. Not me. Emily. Is she causing a scene in front of this big old crowd? It may not be about anything at all. I intend to find out. Okay. Where are you going? I'm going to 185 West 74th Street. What is that? <gasps> she found out about Susan? I made Miss, uh, Miss Alexander send you the note, Mrs. Kane. She didn't want to at first, I... but she did it. Wow, trashy. This is foul play. In case you don't know, Emily, this gentleman. I'm not a gentleman. Oh, well, again, self-awareness. Monday morning, every paper in the state except his will carry the story I'm going to give him. What story? Story about him and Miss Alexander, Mrs. Kane. <gasps> there isn't any story. Shut up. This is so dirty. But everywhere I went from there now seems on. seems to be only one decision you can make, Charles. I'd say it had been made for you. Wow. Good night, Mr. Geddes. Woo-wee! That was intense! Are you coming, Charles? No. Charles is choosing his mistress? You decided what you were going to do, Charles, some time ago. Wow! I would rather somebody be mad at me than disappointed in me. Have you a car, Mrs. King? Yes, thank you. Good night. Good night. Wow, weird, 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 weird. The whole interaction, she found out about Susan through his political opponent and now they're leaving, not together, but at the same time, Charles stayed there. The drama. And that's when it was posted in the newspaper. The church count is still to be heard from. I'm afraid we've got no choice. Oh. Go with the loser print? That one. Oh. You don't have to call it fraud. Let him lose gracefully. He made a poor mistake with another woman and that cost him votes. Oh, boy. That's going to add up to something bigger than your privilege, and I don't know what you'll... You know, Charlie needed some tough love. Heck, by the time they got married, she's probably a super old maid. I bet she's 24! No, 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 no. Oh, he did build the opera house. But she said she didn't like opera. Because her mom told her to do it and, like, was making her do it. And she's like, I don't have the voice for opera. <laughs> so, he didn't exactly write a good review. He's writing a bad notice. Like you wanted it to be. So you look at him keeping your integrity and your honesty in your review. Sure, we're speaking, Jedediah. You work for him. You're fired. Oh, I guess you don't work for him anymore. <laughs> What's it called? Uh, Shangri-La, El Dorado, oh, Sloppy Joe's. What was the name of that place? <laughs> <laughs> he hadn't finished it when she left him. He never finished it. He never finished anything. Except my notice. Damn, this guy is bitter. Who would know what Rosebud is? I feel like we've talked to all the major people. Well, I say we've talked to. Susan didn't talk, so I guess Susan knows. You know, maybe I should never stop for Charlie that first time I met him. Well, you can't change that now, girl, so just help. I couldn't focus if I were her. Oh, you're on... Who am I? I couldn't hit the note. I thought you'd see it my way. Well, when you threaten them, when you threaten a person, yeah, they're more likely to see things your way. Yes, lags get into it. Okay, so people are falling asleep and distracted, but here's the thing. Is it her fault or is it just opera? Like, <laughs> is it her fault or is it just opera? <laughs> See, make your, make your move a bit small. Well, in my whole debut, come in! Oh, 
I'll get it. Oh, somebody is not happy. But of course I'm not high class like you, and I never went to any school. Wait till you find out that he wrote it. You did send him a check for twenty-five thousand dollars, didn't you? Susan, if you don't shut the hell up! What's that? And he sent back the principles. I'm through! I never went into the first place! I hate Susan. I hate Susan. I will not tell them to you again. You will continue with your singing. Oh, that's a scary scene. His shadow overpowering her? That's scary. <laughs> Bitch kept singing though. <laughs> She became an opener for the opera. We still have not figured out what Rosebud is. Or who Rosebud is. Did she OD? Like, I know she's breathing, but was the purpose to OD is what I'm asking, I guess. I guess the strain of preparing for the new opera is excited and confused her. Yes, yes, I'm sure that was it. Mm. Or she hates her life and wanted out. Hey, girl. Oh, Lord, she is sweating. She ain't doing good. Oh, a person could go crazy in this dump. Nobody to talk to. No in this dump? I'm tired of being a hostess. I want to have fun. Please, Charlie. You wanted out of the spotlight, and now you want to go back. Not to sing, but to have fun, still. I might have a picnic tomorrow. Might everybody to spend the night at the Everglades. Bite everybody. Order everybody a meal and make them sleep in tents. Who wants to sleep in tents when they got a nice room? Don't you want her to have fun? She's impossible to please. But so, then again, so is he. So I don't, I don't know who's worse at this point. Also, she's busy bitching about him not giving her anything that she wants. Like, why? What's stopping her from doing it? What's stopping her from getting what she wants? I guess. Like, she's married to a rich man. Like, just go. I'm not going to stop it. Right now. You never gave me anything. He just tried to buy me into getting you something. Susan! Don't hit her. Sure. I'm Charles Foster Kane. Whatever you want, just name it and it's yours. But you gotta love me. Oh. I'm not sorry. Guess you heard that, girl. Who or what is Rosebud, damn it? Should know that I guess that everyone here will know about this. She's leaving him while people are still there. No, and everything will be exactly the way you want it to be. Making any promise to keep her there. In case you haven't heard how I lost all my money, and it was plenty, believe me. The last ten years have been tough. <laughs> I tell you about Rosebud. How much is it worth to you? A lot. Thousand dollars? Two hours of my life. Your men act that kind of funny sometimes. What do you mean? Like the time his wife left him. <laughs> Jesus Christ, what was the point of that? Scared the shit out of me. Big feelings. I mean, I'm glad to see that, you know, he's not overreacting. The snow globe that he had that fell from his hand at the beginning. Rosebud. The snow globe? <laughs> All his help is like, hey buddy, how you doing? <laughs> and that's what you know about Rosebud? Yeah. That's all he knows? He said all kinds of things that didn't mean anything. So we still don't know? You better get going. Quiet floor, 1921. Okay. Well, whoever's gonna sell all that stuff is really gonna make a lot of money though. How much do you think all this is worth, Mr. Thompson? Millions? See what I tell you. State of Mary Kane, Little Salem, Colorado. Value, two dollars. Wow, he really kept everything. He sure liked to collect things, didn't he? Anything and everything. We call that hoarding now. What's Rosebud? It's a great question. If you could have found out what that Rosebud meant, I bet that would have explained everything. No, I don't think so. No, I guess Rosebud is just a piece in a jigsaw puzzle. A missing piece. What? What? We'll miss the train. Do 
we for real not find out what Rosebud means? Oh my god. Oh my god. He was indeed a hoarder. It's like there's a really fine line between hoarding and like American pickers, you know? <laughs> and I just don't know what side of the line this man is on. Oh my god, are we gonna find out what the hell Rosebud was? Throw that junk. They're just burning stuff? Rosebud was his sled? Well, let's talk about it and let's constipate on it for a second. I got it. Oh my God. Oh my God. Big Brain Ashley showed up. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. All right, so Rosebud, we saw at the end, was his sled, all right? And he just threw a little hissy fit after Susan left and he picked up the snow globe that had the snowy cabin, right? So when he picked it up, he said, Rosebud, because that was the sled. He picked up that, that snow globe because that was where he was, the boarding school with his mom and his dad. Remember when he was taken? That was the only thing he loved was his mom. And his sled, Rosebud, was what he was playing with the day that he got taken away from his mom. He kept the one thing that held him, connected him to his mom, to his biological family, because his mom had to give him up. His mom sent him away. So he, that was the one thing he truly loved with his mother, and the one physical thing he had to keep his mother close to him was his sled, Rosebud. I guess this movie just goes to show you that money don't buy happiness. So his last word might have been Rosebud, but what he was thinking about was the life he never got to experience with his mother, was his mother's love. And that's why he bought people things, because that's all he was good at doing. He was proving himself to people with the money he had. I love a good little mystery movie. That's what I think. I think, well, we know Rosebud was the sled, but that's why I think it ended like that. I think it ended with the sled that was the most important thing to him was his, was, was that happy memory. The last memory he ever had with his mother. And he was having so much fun on his little sled. What? On oh, his little sled. That's my interpretation. Let me know in the comments. I don't know. Okay. I don't know if that's 100% accurate, but that's my interpretation of it. I would love to hear yours in the comments below. So I love a good little mystery movie. I love movies that keep me guessing. I blame it on my ADHD. I'm my brain, my noggin always be thinking. Sometimes it's not thinking well. <laughs> but it do be thinking. And so I love a good little mystery. And let me tell you something. I really enjoyed how we interviewed multiple people. And of course it picked up right, you know, every other person picked up right where the other person left off. That was fun for me. But the whole movie, almost two hours, and at the very last 10 minutes, you hear of Rosebud. We learned about every other person, every other thing in his life. But the one thing he wanted at the end was his childhood where everything changed for him. He just wanted to be enough and nothing ever was. Nothing ever was enough. He just wanted to be enough. And on that, on that snowy day, his sled outside, that was enough. And that's my interpretation of Citizen Kane. <laughs> Let me know if you agree. I for, that's a for real thing that I'm asking you to do. I'm not like, drop your favorite color in the comments below. For real though, tell me. Am I right? Am I wrong? Do you agree? Do you disagree? I don't know. Tell me below. Thank you so much for watching. I Oh, I really enjoyed this movie. At first, I'm gonna be honest with you. At like an hour in, I was like, I don't know how this is going for me. But that last 10 minutes, like picking up, leading up to Rosebud, that last like 10 minutes, it really does. I wouldn't watch it again tomorrow, but I would definitely watch it again. And so for that, I am going to give it four out of five stars. I wouldn't watch it again tomorrow, but... I would definitely recommend this to the friend and I would love to watch it with them. So four out of five stars for this movie. Thank you so much, Chris, for supporting me, the channel, and beans like you do. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, stick around because coming up Monday is The Sandlot. Coming up Friday is Hitchcock's Rear Window. And then next Monday is going to be 
Roadhouse, where I have been told by the patrons that I'm going to see some naked Patrick Swayze. So like, subscribe, stick around, links to social media down below if you want to be my friend outside the YouTubeverse, and I'll see you right back here on Monday. Bye!